Hey, that's a great, uh, love your background, Chandu. That's really cool. Love it. <laughs> that's just a bunch of random numbers in Excel. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of conditional formatting. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Are you going to keep that going like the whole time? No, not the whole time. It's just annoying already, but I'll just check what <laughs> no, I start right. on. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit distracting, but I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> welcome, everybody. Oh, so fantastic to see so many people here already. Wow. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> and Hey, we've got people from all over. We've um, It is 12.30 here in Sydney. It is what time is it in Wellington, Chandu? It's about half past two now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at, that's right. Our clocks went back the other day and Susan yeah. is in Queensland. We are now on the same time, which makes things a heck of a lot easier. So I'm Danielle Stein Fairhurst. We've got Susan Wilkin, who is going to be um, helping out with the chat in the background. And of course, we have Chandu. So this is a very special uh, webinar. We've been running lots and lots of virtual meetups. So um, thank you so much, Chandu, for agreeing to do this. Um, we are today going to be talking about uh, introducing dynamic array formulas, which is really exciting. And I can't wait to see what you've got in store for us, Chandu. I know that Chandu doesn't really need an introduction, but um, I'm going to introduce you anyway before we get started. So Chandu has been an Excel MVP for many, many years. He's one of the one of the first blogs, I think, on Excel. Uh, so he has got the status of being a most valued professional from Microsoft, which is a, a pretty big deal. Um, he aims to make you awesome in Excel and he has trained literally thousands and thousands of people to make them absolutely awesome in Excel, just like him. So uh, welcome uh, Chandu and to everybody. And I'm gonna hand over to you Chandu, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to first turn off this annoying background. And then we'll okay. get it. <laughs> While you're doing that, I might just mention about the chat, actually. Um, you might notice if you're joining us live, um, if you're coming in on the uh, the recording, you won't see this. But if you're if you're live with us, you'll see um, a chat either at the top of your screen or at the bottom. There's a chat and a QA. and a If you're having any problems or questions or anything you want to talk to us about, feel free to go in on the chat with that. There's also Q&A. So if there's a question that you've got for Chandu, um, do that on the Q&A. You can also, other people can answer the, the Q&A as well. Uh, we may not get a chance to, um, to answer all the questions, depending on how many questions we have, but we'll certainly do our best. Oh, that's Thanks, you're, you're back in your you're, you're back in your spare room, Chandu. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm back from that Excel spreadsheet. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's so good to see you all. Uh, we are going to look at dynamic array functions. Uh, this is one of the newly introduced functionality in Excel. It has been uh, kind of doing rounds uh, in the um, uh, testing and uh, Microsoft circles for about close to one year. But after all that built up, uh, finally, the functionality is slowly coming out to public. And I thought uh, we could do a webinar where I can uh, showcase these functionalities and encourage you to test them out. This is uh, a true game changer in a way that, uh, you know, we tend to think of Excel formulas as uh, something that you give some input and you always produce a single cell or a single value or maybe sometimes an array of outputs. But dynamic array functions, they provide options for us to deal with a whole bunch of data in one go and produce outputs that go into a whole bunch of cells. So there is no point uh, just talking about it. I'm just going to go into a small presentation and then to the Excel workbook where we are going to play with this. I will provide a full sample workbook. Uh, you can also download and kind of practice when you are watching this. Alternatively, you can wait me, show everything, and then uh, download the file so that you could recap the concepts. Yeah, I actually sent out a link. You know that blog yeah. article that you wrote yesterday, Chendo? Yeah. I, I sent that out to everyone, and Susan's going to pop it on the chat as well. Cool. Uh, so we will put that link in the chat window along with uh, along uh, as well. Let me uh, share my screen. I have a a PowerPoint presentation. This is just to kind of get started. Uh, so the webinar topic is dynamic array functions, and uh, we will be looking specifically at these six new functions that Excel has introduced: filter, unique, sort, sort by sequence, and rand array. Um, so um, I want to first uh, to say a big thanks to Daniel uh, from Plum Solutions for organizing this webinar. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, sharing some of the thoughts uh, during uh, an unprecedented global lockdown scenarios that we are all uh, going through. 
I thought it would be fun to first tell you what I am doing during my lockdown. So I've come up with my lockdown icons. This just takes you through my typical day. So I wake up, uh, I've been waking up quite early these days, about half past four. That's mainly because um, with Joe and kids also at home, it's hard to balance uh, work uh, times and uh, and family time. So I've been waking up quite early so that I have some time for uh, doing anything important to my work, uh, like on the blog or preparing for this webinar or whatnot. Uh, so then I make a big cup of coffee and um, uh, and then I either work or sometimes if I'm too lazy, I go and play a bit of video games. Uh, I've been replaying some of the games on my console uh, just to, uh, you know, pass time, I guess. <laughs> And then uh, once Joe wakes up, we have breakfast and then we take our dog for a walk. By the way, our dog's name is Excel. So we, we, I, I start my day with Excel, but not with the traditional Excel. And then uh, I work for some more time. Uh, and then uh, I usually lounge in the couch uh, after lunch and maybe watch some videos or chat with my kids or um, or sometimes I do a bit of drawing or or even uh, in the evening times so we both Joe and I work out uh, in, in our garage with some weights or or just body weight or something like that and then um, we, we have our dinner and then watch some more TV and then go to bed so this is our lockdown icons I hope uh, you have something similar uh, equally enjoyable story um, let's get into the dynamic array functions. Uh, there are uh, six uh, new functions. In fact, there are quite a fit, bit more functions and I'm expecting that Microsoft will launch several more functions as this whole dynamic array world evolves. But the starting points are these six filter. What filter does is it filters a table or a range based on conditions. Unique, uh, as the name says, it will extract unique items from a list. Sort will sort a list of data based on some conditions uh, and sort by is for sorting one list based on another list and sequence for making a bunch of numbers and rand array for making a bunch of random numbers. Now, those of you who have been uh, in the webinar from the beginning, you saw me having this, that goofy uh, Excel numbers background. So that was generated with rand array and a bit of conditional formatting. Uh, you can download a sample data that I'm going to present in this webinar along with uh, example functions from that link. Mind you, the dynamic array functions are quite new, so not everybody uh, will be able to use them or access them. Uh, at the moment, I think uh, Microsoft has provided these to certain parts of users in the Office 365 world. So um, probably in the next few months, it will be available uh, more generally for all 365 customers. So on that note, I'll go and uh, share the Excel workbook and then we will get into um, that uh, file. So this is my um, Excel file. Uh, I have some sample data here. Uh, throughout this webinar, we will refer to this same data uh, for learning uh, and playing with the dynamic array functions. So you have a table of employee data with uh, several columns, names of employee, gender, department, where they work, how old they are, what is their uh, date of join, what kind of salary they are getting, what is their performance rating on a scale of one to six, and who is their manager. Uh, before even you write a single dynamic formula, let's first understand what this really means. In a traditional world, if I go to um, a cell and say equal to and then point to a cell, let's point to uh, something like that, we will get the value in that cell here. Now, the normal expectation when you work in Excel is that uh, you get a single value in a cell, like that formula returns one value. But uh, this data here, it is actually in a table, it is named data. Now, if I want to get a copy of this data, but as a reference elsewhere, uh, in the old days, you would have to make multiple references. So this would be B4, that will be B5, this will be C4, like that. With the dynamic array world, what happens is you can write formulas that can return an entire range of values. It doesn't have to be a single value. So for example, you can go to a cell and then simply say data. Now remember data refers to that entire table. So your formula technically is actually a big range, not a single cell. And when you press enter, you get this big table here. This is exactly same as the data on the left hand side, but now it has all of those rows. And if anything here changes, that will also change. For example, if the very first employee 
uh, is in procurement department and I changed this to technology department. Uh, this formula also updates. So this is uh, the behavior of dynamic arrays, right? What happens here is a single formula is now returning an entire range of values. This entire range of values are referred to as spill range. That means the formula is only in this cell N4, but it is kind of spilling down and sideways depending on how much data there is. So if you select B N4 cell, you can see that it is equal to data. But if you select any other cell, it's kind of grayed out indicating that this cell doesn't really have a formula there. It's kind of empty, but it is actually spilled over from there. Right. So the result here is actually because it is all spilled over and Microsoft identifies this uh, kind of a spill range by showing a light blue border around the spill range. So anytime you select any cell, it will have that border and a shadow effect to say that this is all one giant spill range here. And if you unselect, then it goes back. OK, enough of that. Let's go and see what these new functions do. The very first one is filter uh, and then um, Let's take a quick look at filter. If I want to get a list of all the employees who are reporting to, for example, Ian, uh, we could use a filter. I want to filter data. And then I want to include people that have the manager. So data manager column is equal to Ian, right? And then we close the bracket, press enter. We will get a subset of data that is reporting to Ian, right? So this is what the filter function does. It kind of filters the data. Now you might be thinking, hey, this is good, but what happened to the headers? You know, we lost them. That's because the function is using data and the data is only referring to the data part of the table. It doesn't really have the header information there. So one quick way to kind of add the headers is you can go to the cell above and then say data hash headers. So this will return a range of cells called headers uh, and then it will print the header values because the header values are going across the sheet. They will go across the sheet here as well and we will get the headers. Now let's go answer another question. What happened to the date join? Now the date join is actually formatted as date here, but this one it shows as 42994. This is because what dynamic array function is doing is it is giving a calculation. It's not doing the formatting bits for us. So any formatting that you need to do, you must do it on top of the formula result, just as you would normally do in Excel. So for example, if you go to an empty cell and then say equal to and point to a date, you might get the date because Excel is smart enough to say, hey, this is date that's going to be date. But dynamic array functions are not like that. So they will show the numeric representation of the date, which is usually something like that. So this is what the filter function does. Now let's uh, take a closer look at the formula here and understand um, how this filter calculation itself is done. So the first parameter is data. That means I want to look at my data and filter it. And then the second parameter is you might kind of think as manager equal to Ian, but this is actually a set of true or false values, same size as the data in terms of number of rows. So because data has 100 employees, uh, what Excel expects here is a hundred a list of 100 true or false values. And if it is true, it's going to return that particular row false. It's going to ignore that row. So that's how it works. In this case, data manager equal to Ian would kind of return that true false value. So if you select that little portion alone and press F9, you can see that um, this is what it is. It's, it's true wherever that employee is reporting to Ian and false for all others. So that's that. Now let's go and uh, see one more example of filter and then I'll wait for some questions. So let's say I want to filter anyone who is reporting to Ian, but also working in website department. So we simply say data, data manager is equal to, this time let's not say Ian, let's say the value comes from X to the cell. So we, we will kind of have a parameter of, of that. So we will have to, because it's now, it has to be X2 as a manager, as well as the department needs to be a website. So it's an end condition. That means both must be true. We need to use a star operator to do that kind of an end operation. And the data department is equal to website. 
So this will currently give an error because X2 is blank. So it's now trying to see manager is zero and department is website. That's what it is trying to do. And whenever that happens, you will get this new kind of an error called calc error, right? So that's one of the newer errors that Excel uh, added as part of dynamic array functionality. Um, if you don't want to see the error, you want to probably see something else. You can also try this if empty operation like uh, no employees. Technically, you know, nobody's reporting to zero as an employee manager, so that's what it is. And now if I put Ian here, it will give me a subset of employees that are reporting to Ian in the website department. So this is how that particular thing works. And you can change this to Carla or Chendu. I don't work there, so nobody is reporting to me. So this is uh, how that particular uh, example of filter works. I'm just going to take a quick pause here and take a look at the chat window to see uh, Q&A. Um, yeah, not too many questions, Chandu. Okay. Uh, uh, Chinmay was asking about how to define the table. It's just the named range, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It is just uh, we have the raw data and you can press insert table and it will convert that into a table. And you can give the name through the table name options here to have that kind of a thing. Um, and uh, that'll, that'll, then you can then use that name elsewhere. So this is uh, your filter examples. We have seen a simple example, how to do an AND condition. Let's do one more, which is uh, if I want to have anybody who is uh, aged um, under, let's say we have uh, some sort of age boundaries. So aged under and then aged over. And I want to, for example, well, for some analysis, I want to look at anybody who is under 28 or over 40. And only that set of groups I want to uh, extract and, and then maybe do some analysis. Now, if you go and normally want to filter this in Excel, you would need to, for example, if I want to use number filters, I can't really use anything. Uh, like if I use between or something, um, this is not good enough for us because uh, it will get everybody in between. But what we want is opposite of it. That is, um, we, we, we are interested in looking at 28 or under and then 40 or over. So we will have to kind of manually select these age brackets to or unselect them, right? So that's, uh, that's the kind of condition. You know, the technical name for this kind of thing is an or condition. That means uh, either this can be true or that can be true. So let's see how the filter fun function will work for that. So we want to filter. This time when you're filtering, we just want to see the names. We don't want to see the whole data for that. So we can just say, show me data name, filter name based on data age is under that, right? But uh, we also want to either less than or equal to 28 or more than 40. So it's an R condition. So we will have to use the plus operator in this case. Data age is greater than or equal to 40. This will give you a subset of names that are fitting into that particular setup, right? Uh, I love that you don't have to worry about your F4. Yeah, you, you don't have to make any absolute references anymore. Uh, even though this is saying AI2 here, uh, it, it wouldn't become AI3 or anything because none of these other cells really have any formula there. They are all uh, kind of belonging to that particular cell. So whatever formula is here, that is calculating that entire list and then it is spilling down. Now let's uh, go and uh, and add some extra troubles here. For example, you are filtering and you can see that we have uh, maybe um, about 50 people in the 46 people in this list, right? So um, I, I underestimated this list and I thought there would be maybe 10 people. So I had some other values here like, so what we are trying to do is there is something here and we thought, oh, there will be only this many people. So we put something else further down. So now we have a formula that is trying to spill down or spill sideways. And there is something else that is stopping. In this case, you will get this hash spill error, which will also show some dotted lines around the supposed range where it wants to go and uh, the value that is stopping it. So when you have the spill error, that means your spreadsheet now has something else going on that is preventing uh, this formula from doing its work. So if you delete that, the error will go. Uh, and, um, and that's that. Okay, 
so that's your filter function. Let's take a look at the next one, which is unique function. What unique function does is. Sorry, there was just a couple, just a couple of questions I oh, wanted sure. to cover off if you've got a sec. Yeah. Um, Raheem says it's just like an advanced filter in the data tab. Is that right? It's very similar to the advanced. It filter. is similar uh, in, in the sense that you are uh, filtering the data, but uh, the crucial difference between this and other features of Excel is that uh, in an advanced filter scenario, you are doing something like you're filtering something and the result comes up. But if the criteria changes or if you need to filter again, um, then you will have to run the whole process there. Exactly. Whereas this is all dynamic, right? This is actually in a cell. So if I change this to 33, I'll get a shorter list automatically here. In fact, I can build some extra calculations on top of this. Uh, so we are only looking at from a filter perspective. Even, I don't care how, about the filter. Let's say I just want to count how many people are there. I can take that filter and I can put a count A around it. Uh, remember, these are text values, so we must uh, count text values. And I'll get the number here uh, as uh, as that, right? So you have 80 people. So now this is a formula that is telling me how many people are under 33 or over 40. Of course, this is probably a poor formula. You could use some other versions of count tips or something to do this. But uh, you know, nevertheless, it, this is how it works. Or uh, you can use that filter range as part of some other calculation. Like um, uh, let's say this is comes up here. And now I wanted to see how many people out of these have their first name beginning with D for some whatever purpose. So we could use uh, count ifs and then refer to that range because we want to get that entire spill range. We can use the hash operator uh, because we don't know how far that goes down, right? Because it's all dynamic. So we can simply say, go to A AH5 and then pick up the spill range from there using that hash operator. And then uh, tell me how many people begin with the D. So we can use that and then it'll tell you five. And as you change this, for example, you make this tighter like 23, uh, nobody has D in their first name or, um, or 29 and then you might have three people. So this is how uh, that works. So in a way it's quite different and it's, it, it enables more opportunities for analysis and presentation once you start thinking in this direction. And we've got a, a, got a uh, maybe a tricky one uh, from uh, Carlos in Peru. How do you call the header? I think what he means is how do you refer to the header? Yeah, so uh, I think I show it here. We can just say data, assuming it's in table, you simply say data hash headers and it'll get you that header. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Nelson wants to know if the table has a metric, can the data table include a subtotal at the end? Um, very good question. Um, the the tricky bit with uh, with spill ranges is we know where they begin, right? Because this is where I'm writing my formula, so I have the control of where they are starting. But you don't really have any control how far along they can go, so we can't really figure out mm. which cell the subtotal needs to be going. So it it opens up another challenge. One option is if you're happy, you can print a subtotal above, like you know, count of people or uh, average age of this group or whatever uh, on on the top, and uh, that that that's all right. I don't really have a ready answer for how to get the subtotal in between or uh, at the end, because that's going to make uh, for some very complex filter or some other type of formula for sure. Yeah, yeah. it ends up like a basically like a table, doesn't it, or, or a Yeah, point. yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Jonathan says um, Charles Williams has an add-in to give subtotals for dynamic array. Yeah, so there are uh, some other solutions. Um, I think once we start to think in this direction, because this opens the doors for data analysis in in a much more parallel way than uh, than traditionally done in Excel. So then you keep asking for more, like you would come across situations where uh, these six formulas are not enough and you really need something more. Uh, I hope we don't get there today, but uh, you know, those of you who have already been toying with them or want to play, they, you will come across situations where they are not enough. Yeah, uh, and still under development, they're still working on it. They're bringing up. Yeah, exactly. So I'm quite positive that Microsoft is also paying attention to this kind of feedback and they they will add more functionalities as and when possible. Okay. 
let's go and talk about unique. Um, the good thing with these six functions is they, they're all fairly straightforward. So once you know their name and basic syntax, you can pretty much work on most of them uh, in, in a very straightforward manner. Um, so I will not uh, spend too much time on the simple examples, but uh, let's see how far we go. So we can have uh, extract a unique list of items. For example, I can say, get me a list of all the departments. Um, and then this will give you those um, seven departments. And remember, I changed one of them to tech. Otherwise, the data doesn't really have tech if there's only five departments there. Um, and uh, so this is the unique list. If you compare this with just data department, you know, this is a list of all the departments of 100 people. So this will be 100 long. Whereas what unique did is it kind of put one row uh, for each department. And if there's a duplication, it automatically ignored. So that's what unique does. Uh, unique has an extra couple more parameters. So if you, the default behavior is you take a column and then you are extracting unique elements from that. But for some weird reason, your data is sideways and you want to extract all the unique elements across the row, uh, then you can use the by call option. And then there is an additional one called exactly once. Uh, again, these are quite, um, not a day-to-day -day situation, but sometimes you may want to know what uh, what those are. For example, uh, if you go to the data, you can see that we have a date of join, right? And uh, we have a suspicion that, you know, most of our recruitment is done in batches. That means we hire people and then multiple employees join on the same day. Uh, but uh, I want to validate that assumption. So one way to ask is, you know, show me all the dates where there's only one employee joined. In other words, that date has appeared only once. You know, there's no duplicates uh, of that date. So we can have like a unique joining dates uh, and then uh, say unique data date joined and then true for the last parameter. So this is gonna give you a list of, as you could see, that was quite wrong. In fact, we have like a majority of the employees just joined on their own on that day. So 91, 91 times uh, we hired a single person on that day, whereas the other nine times we, we hired more than one employee. So this is uh, what that is. And as you could see, this only shows up the dates as they are. It's not going to do any formatting. But uh, if you want to, for example, also do a formatting on it, you can use uh, uh, Excel formulas to convert number to format. So for example, you could take text on this and then say, uh, show me in DMMM uh, YY format. And this is going to just create a bunch of values that are in date formats right there. So the dynamic array functions are not just these functions, you know, it kind of changes the whole behavior of Excel, right? It's now taking uh, a text formula and then thinking, oh, wait a sec, I have not a single value here. I have a whole, whole bunch of values. I'm going to just make a whole bunch of text values and present them uh, in- That's in so cool, that's so cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so that's the unique function. Uh, by default, it works on one column at a time, but you can use some trickery or ideas to take values from multiple columns and combine them to uh, make, um, make unique combinations, et cetera. Uh, and in the link that I provided, there is an example that shows how to do that. So let's go and uh, take a look at sort as well. What sort does is it sorts a list of values. So for example, I can just see an alphabetized list of all our employees by saying sort data name. It's very, very simple, straightforward formula. It takes the name, sorts them A to Z, and you will get the results. If you want to reverse the sort order, you can also um, say, uh, ignore the second thing and then say minus one, and then it'll give you from Z to A order of the names. So that's what sort does. Now let's go and uh, see some more examples of what sort can do. You can take an entire table. So we can say sort my entire data table uh, on, on the sixth column. This is similar to how you normally write VLOOKUP formulas, also use the column number. So six is actually salary uh, in in minus one, which means descending order. So that means I want to see the employees in the reverse order of their salary. So most paid person will be on the top and uh, this will this will give you that kind of a picture. That person and that salary column is sorted. 
what sort does is it takes the values and it sorts one column at a time. There is some additional usages that you could do, but in general, this is the behavior of sort. So sometimes you may want to apply tiered sorting. That means I want to see by department and within department by salary, you know, those kind of things. Uh, and in such situations, you can also use sort by function. So which, which will let you have multiple uh, columns and orders. Uh, so it can kind of go into nested sorting situations. So we can say, take my data and then uh, sort by department in um, in A to Z order and then sort by salary in descending order. So this will have all the departments uh, finance because that's the very first department in alphabetical order and then their employees, uh, HR and then their employees. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a sec, I could sort my data with uh, sort options here. I could filter my data with uh, filter options there. What, what's the point of doing this with formulas? And that's because we are still putting our normal traditional Excel glasses and viewing this. But uh, here, what we have is a functionality that can sort any kind of data on the fly and present the results. So what this opens up is, for example, you could make a report where uh, the user can say, oh, this is good, but can you sort it by the head count or can you sort it by the attrition rate? And it, the charts can automatically sort because of these kind of background functions. And that makes the whole experience of reporting, dashboards and uh, analytics even more powerful and interesting and useful. So that's uh, sort and sort by functions. Uh, and uh, let's see, if, uh, are there any more questions that, uh, that you have? Yeah, that's an interesting one from uh, John has just said, I wonder, Chandu, after so long thinking in cell formula mode, how do you think just, I think, um, changing the way that you think from form cell formula to um, using it in a, in a dynamic array, it's just a really different way of thinking, isn't it? It is a different way of thinking. Uh... I, I wouldn't lie, but the, the thing is, if you look at uh, some of the more popular languages for data analysis, for example, R or Python, they have always had this, this way of looking at data. There is always, uh, there is no cell reference uh, ideas there. I mean, they, they are, but the normal way of looking at it is it's always a bunch of data and operations on that data to get from one state to another. And if you look at uh, more uh, traditional Excel situations itself, like if you take pivot tables, uh, for example, within pivot tables, we are always thinking in column perspective. We are not thinking uh, uh, A1 or A7 or B3 kind of things. We are thinking employees, salary, age, and we are calculating things on top or we are applying filters on top like that. So we do have that luxury both in Excel and those of you who have had uh, work experience in other languages, uh, that, that thinking background already in there. It's just that we are not really switching it on, but once you start to switch it on, then it makes sense uh, even more. If you are having difficulty, I would suggest maybe uh, you know, taking a Python or R language uh, book or watching some videos or even doing some programming for fun. You know, most of us are locked down. So it's a great opportunity to pick up one of these skills and they're not terribly hard languages and you will see quickly uh, uh, another way to speak to your data. And that, that adds that extra uh, memory and, and processing in your mind to look at uh, these things as well. Yeah, I think it's, um, I mean, Power BI is, is, is yeah. similar in that you're only looking at from a column perspective, you can't do individual cells, whereas what I love about the dynamic arrays is you can do both, you can sort of have exactly so it kind of has the good middle ground and uh, it gives you both. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, we had the we had a, a virtual meetup last week with um, Jeff Robson, and he talked about how to build a financial model mm -hmm. um, using dynamic arrays. So you can kind of get that um, that idea of having individual cells as well as using dynamic arrays, which is which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, sorry, just one, just a question from Amro. Um, he says, um, "Sorry, could you just go over how it's different the sort by the sort and the sort by filters?" Uh, cool. Uh, sure. So what sort does is it just sorts a table based on a single column. So we are we are either sorting by the 
salary column or department column we couldn't really have like i mean uh, both department and then within department by salary kind of a thing going on so that's where the sort by comes handy where you can say i want this data to be sorted by uh, first by this array in 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 um, in ascending order and then by this array in descending order so because all these people happen to be in finance so then excel will go into that column and then arrange them in that order and then it will go in and do it like this so that's what sort by does it uh, there's some more technical differences in the background but uh, in in a broad sense this is how they both differ uh sometimes you you want to use sort sometimes you want to use sort by um let, let's uh let's see we got four functions right we have filter sort sort by and unique let's see how the whole thing plays together when you start to combine them for example i want to uh have a a simple employee report here uh which is viewed from a manager perspective so i'll have uh, a manager and then i want to uh i want to select one of the managers and then i want to see their staff along with some summary information on the top so we could first uh, we will first extract a list of managers here um and then this is simply sort unique data manager so this will give you that and remember this is in by 5 that's the cell address there so i'll go to this cell i go to data um data validation and then i'll say take a list that begins from by5 hash uh, because it's a spill range so this will give you a little drop down it will give you all those five names in alphabet as order because that's how this is right i can pick any employee manager there and then once that is done i want to then um show their staff uh, your staff and then this is filter um data data manager is equal to that okay uh we nearly got a spill error all right so this is uh cynthia staff you could just uh play with this and it will change obviously you know as you would expect um let me zoom down a bit so we can actually see more of this all right so that's there and now let's say we will also want to have a sort by as an option and i want to be able to pick one of the columns to sort my data um and um, so we will have uh, column names here uh, it's not necessary to have this here but it's, you know, it just helps us so we will say um data hash headers i'll give you there now notice the difference between this and that that one is going down whereas this is going sideways okay what happens if you refer to this spill range for sort by so we'll give another data validation list okay so it it will still work but it kind of looks a bit awkward so one way to kind of turn sideways data into regular column fashion is you could use transpose function and it will transpose the data now transpose is an older excel function it's not one of the new ones it just happens that most of us would not even use transpose on a day to day basis so you wouldn't even know that it existed um but it it is still um so i want to now sort this by name um and uh, you know i'll just move this down a bit here and then i'll also add the headers it makes more sense let's uh, make them bold and uh, fill up some color in there okay so now i want to sort this by name and as you make the change as you want the data to change now it works when you select you know it is filtering but it is not really sorting so we will rope in the sort option as well sort sort this data on on name column but unfortunately you know this expects the number not name so we can take a uh, name and put it in match function we can say name match that selection in the in the spill range here uh, with an exact match and it will have that data there and you can then see who joined earlier or what is the salary 
or obviously there's no point doing with the manager you know like that and and uh, this will this is now combining all those ideas right we have used unique we have used it filter we have used it sort etc cetera, etc cetera, to uh, do that we could go one more level and sorry. add sorry, sorry go ahead. Chandy, could you just show us again um how that drop down that data valid the the formula when you did that data validation drop down mm -hmm. you just did a little can you just show us again we just had yeah sure uh, um so we would go to the data validation and then select list and you would refer to the very first cell where the data begins. So this would, in this case, uh, it was in BY, but I moved it to CA now. So that's the cell, that's the very first cell. And then you simply put the hash symbol, pound symbol. So that's the operator that will take the range and it will fill it down as many cells as they are. So, because we, we don't really know how many managers are going to be there. We can't really say uh, CA5 to CA7 or nine. We simply say hash, and it will look, it look at that formula and it will fill it down and then it will just take that entire range there. Same idea for, for the column names as well. Cool, thanks. Okay, um, so the, th this is how these functions can play together to create something that is a, a little more um, powerful or interesting than, than the ordinary things that we normally can. I mean, all of this can be done with regular Excel formulas as well, but uh, they tend to be more clunky and clumsy. And in many cases, what happens is even these cells will contain the formulas. They simply have blank cell returned as a value because we don't know how many are going to return. So we would normally write formulas where there's like 100 rows or something like that. And, and uh, if there is no value, then we stop it. But with, with the dynamic array functions, we don't have to worry about any of that and it all works beautifully. Let's take a look at the two other functions. Now, if these four functions seemed fairly interesting, the next two might look like, oh, what was Microsoft even thinking with these functions? One of them is sequence, right? Again, these functions by themselves are not terribly useful, but when you think in the direction of lists and arrays and tables, you know, they make powerful um, sense. For example, what sequence does is it just makes a list of numbers. So we can just say sequence 10 and it'll give you 10 numbers. One simple usage is let's say I want to make um, a list of um, months uh, starting April 2020. So we could do, uh, for example, uh, sequence and then uh, uh, 10. This will give me 10 months, but instead of doing that, we can simply say e date today, and then that, which is saying from today, get me 10 months ahead. So it'll be like seven to fantastic May. Fantastic from a so, um, financial modeling perspective. Yeah. yeah so this is uh, uh, how you can generate some of these kind of uh, forecasting dates or modeling dates in a more powerful dynamic manner. And you can kind of, uh, for example, you know, uh, you can have a parameter here that says 10 and, uh, and link that to that. So if I want to generate a window of 12 months or 24 months, now you see that as, as it does, it doesn't really extend the formatting. So this is really just the formula, whereas the formatting is still attached to a cell level. So we have applied date formatting only for first 10 cells and that's what it is doing. But uh, in reality, it's all just date value. So it, it, you, can, you can always uh, use that. So that's what sequence does. Uh, the other function is rand array. Again, uh, what this does is it's like sequence, but for making random numbers. So if I say rand array of uh, 10, I'll get 10 random numbers. The default behavior is always zero to one as random fractions. Uh, but you can also um, say that, you know, no, I don't want fractions. I want to have a number between one to 100 uh, of integers only. And uh, you will get uh, 10 random integers between one to 100. While these two functions, both sequence and rand array might seem quite trivial, uh, they can open up uh, doors for some very, very interesting and powerful analysis. For example, let's go back to our uh, staff report here. Now let's just say the manager report, they're not really interested in seeing all the employees. They just want to see maybe the uh, first 10 employees. Okay, show me first 10 
people. Okay, we'll parameterize that. Now, how do I filter this, this debt set of data so that it only has the 10 rows after doing the sort? This is where we can do the sort and then we can do one more filter on top of it. Now this formula gets fairly long. So in the at, at this time in the webinar, you're feeling a bit lost, then uh, you might still feel confused, but don't worry, you can still download this file and have a play with this. Um, and it's not very hard. It's just that uh, uh, it takes a little bit more thinking of how the sequence would come in play here. So we, we will uh, take this and then we want to have a filter on the sorted data so that only the first 10 numbers are first 10 rows are available. So the first challenge is I want to know how many total values are there. Okay. So this is the total values will depend on that particular set, right? If I if I know how many rows are there within the filter of data manager BR4, then I, uh, that many rows will be there. So one way to know that is we could uh, use countifs to count how many people report to Fred. So we can say data manager is equal to Fred. So this will give you a number like 17 or 23. And if I make a sequence that long, I'll get all the numbers from one to 23. And then all I have to do is filter that sequence where the number is less than or equal to 10. So I can simply say, is it less than or equal to 10? And we will, uh, I think we missed some brackets somewhere. I was using equal to it, we should have been a comma in the parameter. So what this does is it's kind of uh, taking original sorted data and then it is doing one more filter on top. Let's just uh, make this all big. So it's doing one more filter on the top by first making a sequence that is same size as the number of people that are reporting to Fred and then checking out of that list how many are less than or equal to 10 because we just wanted to see 10 people after sorting. This becomes more useful when you sort, uh, sort by salary. You know, you're now seeing the lowest paid 10 employees that are reporting to Fred or Carla or like that. So this is, uh, this is how sequence can play together with the rest of the um, dynamic array functions. Uh, we are almost at 50 minute mark. So I think uh, that's a good point. I want to stop uh, explaining these functions uh, at this stage and let's see if there are more questions and then uh, I'll share some closing thoughts. Yeah, great, great. Uh, yeah, we did have a couple of questions. Um, so Nelson asked if you could return, uh, refer to data column names, for example. So going back to the sort or the filter for the filter, um, can you refer to, refer to data column names in standard sum, average, or other aggregation? Uh, interesting question. I think I read the whole thing on the chat window as well. So let, let's say one way of looking at that is, you know, we've done whole be, whole operation and then now we have 10 people here. I want to have their total salary or average salary for those 10 people presented somewhere, right? Um, for example, um, we'll just do this here. Average pay for those 10 people. Now, how do I, because the, the whole thing is parameterized, it could be 10 now, but it can be 12 or 20. You might be tempted to say average of data salary, but that refers to the original salary, whereas this is the set that we are interested in. So this is where, uh, an extra formula that we normally don't bother learning too much in Excel becomes like a powerful weapon, which is index formula. Uh, because if you understand what is happening here, the formula is only here in the BQ10 cell and it is spilled over to all these columns. So that means I want to go to the array that begins at BQ10 and then I want to get the sixth column, which happens to be salary and then take all the values, how many of values that are present there and uh, use that to average. So we could do this average, average of rather than doing a cell references like this, so average of BQ10 spill range, but we don't want to average all these columns. We are only interested in the sixth column. 
So how do I get a sixth column out of a big table? This is where index will come in handy. Index of that array. We don't want any specific row, so that means all rows, but sixth column. So we will ignore the row number function and then just say column number. And uh, this will just give you the average for those 10 people, which is 82948 as presented there. And you can start changing this. Uh, it will work, obviously. So this is one way of doing. Uh, we could also try. I'm not 100% sure if this will work because uh, yeah, it doesn't because BV10, that particular cell doesn't really have a value here. It, it, all the values are actually here and from there they go. So that we can't really refer to anything there. Uh, even if I use the spill range operator, it would not recognize. Uh, let's see what happens if I do it like this. It would work, but if I change the number here to 13, then that number would change because it is now paying attention to those three people, whereas this one stopped at the 10. So, uh, yeah. So it, it is a bit more tricky, but then this is, uh, I think, uh, this is actually a, a journey for Microsoft as well because most of the original functions and original way of looking at data analysis all developed from that single cell mindset. So time now for them to start looking at more powerful and interesting ways to talk to data because there could be spill ranges. So maybe uh, there can be another operator or things that can be added uh, so that it's easier to refer to data that is elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, there's a couple more Qu uh, questions. Uh, I don't know. I think some of them you've already answered, though. I'm not sure if you're able to see those, Chendu. Um, not sure if we have time to go into all of them. And I think some of them you've already kind of answered as part of your presentation. So we might move on. Was there anything else you wanted to cover? Sure. Uh, I'll just go back to the, uh, the presentation. Uh, and uh... Mm. So as I said earlier, you can download a copy of the sample data and a subset of the functions that I've shown in the webinar from that link. Uh, that was published yesterday, so I had no clue what we are going to talk other than the general outline. So we wrote uh, quite a few formulas that were not in that uh, page, but I will uh, I will send a link to this spreadsheet as well, the one that I just worked in the webinar, and you can download that too. And uh, I, I also want to just say that I'm actually planning to launch a dynamic array functions uh, crash course. It, this is like a, an elaborate version of this webinar, if you want to think it like that, uh, in, in the third week of April. So uh, it's a very, very simple course. I, I'm calling it as like a quick course because while these functions are new, there is still just a handful of them. So you can't really explain them forever. So I'm exp I'm hoping, you know, it will be like around three hours of video course and I will email it to you if you're interested and you can just watch it or, or online or download and watch it on the go. Um, and uh, I'm planning to cover about 50 plus examples from beginner to all the way advanced usages, combinations of these functions and some very creative and interesting uses of them. Uh, and uh, you will get, of course, sample workbooks and video files as well. And it will be about $50 or something around that. Uh, and if you are keen, then uh, check out uh, uh, my website on 21st of April. Alternatively, you can go to the link uh, that I pasted earlier and uh, there is a email inbox there. You can just put your email address and I will email you when the course is ready. So that's all. Uh, I Those are uh, the dynamic array functions. I hope you found the webinar interesting and useful. And um, I just want to say a big thanks for uh, coming and uh, from wherever in the world you are. And uh, stay safe. And uh, thank you. Yeah, Any thank you. Thank you, Chandu. Fantastic. What's, um, we had some great, um, fantastic chats and um, all sorts of things going on. I don't know. I'll um, send you send you a copy of that. Um, people were um, concerned about the model off, uh, you know, the the financial modeling world championship. But I had a conversation with um, with FMI, which is a yeah. um, financial modeling uh, certification exam. They are open to the idea of using dynamic arrays. I think that dynamic arrays are still so new, though, and I think that 
you know, until it becomes mainstream where you know everyone has it, I think it's probably not something that everyone is going to use, but it is just around the corner. Um, I think that, um, I don't want to speak for them, but I think that FMI and Model Lock are going to be open to people using them because it's, it's just using, it's going to become standard Excel. It's what, uh, what we're all going to be using. Um, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, while some of the ideas might look a bit scary or unsettling for like well-established models and really set in stone kind of things, uh, this is where things are heading. So uh, it's best to embrace them and start to look at them to improve things. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did have a couple more Q and A's. Um... Yeah, yeah, I think we might have to leave it there. Um, we have got um, another virtual meetup coming up next Wednesday. Uh, that's the 15th of, um, of April. Uh, we've actually got um, Alan Murray, who is with us now, I think. Big shout out to Alan for joining us, because I think it's something like four o'clock in the morning um, in London. So <laughs> thank you for... Thank you for joining us and also thanks for um he he answered you would have seen he answered quite a lot of the the questions on the q a as well so thanks alan um he is going to be talking about the three most useful functions in excel not dynamic arrays he's going to talk about standard i think it's going to be some products some some ifs and index formulas so um i'm looking forward to that one i think that's going to be at a bit more of a human time for um, for those in the uk we're going to do five o'clock in the afternoon for sydney time so did you have any other? Oh, you got your background back again, Chandu. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so that's it. Uh, that's my dynamic arrow background as well. <laughs> love, uh, it, love it. Love it. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I will um, certainly send out all of the links, all of the, the recording and all of the, uh, the, the files and everything. You'll get all of those. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, Daniel. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.